Okay, hello everyone, I'm Dr. Kim and welcome to the YouTube channel for the Neobiotech. And as we mentioned before, today we're going to share about, share the knowledge and experiences about sinus lateral bone graft, which is basically by SLA kit. I've been using SLA kit for 10 years, more than 10 years so far. Okay, so I think it is good chance to share or experiences from the weird cases as well. Okay, so most of our unique concept for sinus surgery is minimally invasive sinus surgery, which is well known from Dr. He's concept. And well, in this book, we summarized all the concepts for minimally invasive sinus graft surgery. So, now I'm going to start with the case from Dr. Ho. Actually, this is not my case. This is Curtis of Dr. Ho, and which is written in this book as well. Okay, so this patient needs some implant for the posteriors. But as you see here, in the right side posterior, so the maxillary, the posterior maxilla, the post maxillary tuberosity is elongated to down to the lower. So we don't have that much space for the upper teeth. So after a while, uh, Dr. Ho did sinus graft with a simple vertical incision and he made lateral sinus opening window with the SLA limer, which is included in SLA kit. Then he dissected sinus membrane and he grafted bone. I think he most of the time he used the alloplastic bone graft for this patient. Okay, so this is radiograph, as you see by the opaque on the uh, sinus of uh, light side, posterior. Okay, so after a while he placed here and there. Now you can see, after he put the lower teeth, how much space we have. We don't have that much space on the posterior here, right? So this is the picture at the surgery. As you see, he removed the bone, he removed the cortical bone from the, uh, the up, then he placed the implant. And he did some terrifying bone, uh, biopsy, and this is how it looked after implant placement. And this is a histologic view of a grafted bone. As you see, alloplastic bone is uh, black, and new bone is pink, is around in the alloplastic material. So this is a radiograph after implant placement on the right upper side. So if you th see this, these two posterior implants are not placed in the residual bone because he removed it, right? So, uh, for creating space. So after that, uh, he did the final restoration for this case. So isn't it amazing? that we can place implant and load implant at the grafted bone only because we remove the residual bone, right? Okay, so let me start, uh, let me show you about strategy for sinus graft, what I have for now, okay? So if you have a thin bone, we definitely gonna need the lateral approach for sinus graft for implant placement, either simultaneously or staged approach, right? But if you have about six, to eight millimeter bone, and if you wanna place 10 millimeter implant, what are you gonna do? So you may need to have a lateral approach for this case, right? But let's think about, let's change the thinking to when we do the lateral approach, a sinus graft. Okay, so if you have a six and eight, but if you're planning to place 8.5 implant, what are you gonna do? Then it's gonna be covered with the Crestar approach maybe simpler than do the lateral approach, right? So when you decide 10 millimeter or 8.5 millimeter, it depends on situation, right? You have to think about the crown implant ratio and the space to the antagonist as well. But you have to think about this, better to be long and has to be wider, okay? Also, you can change the treatment plan from the lateral approach to the crestal approach. Maybe you can reduce the surgical mobility as well. Still, I uh, still mentioned that we have to think about the space, what we have, right? 
Okay, so when I do the multiple implant, right, then I'll, I'll do the lateral approach, then crestal approach. If I have to do the single, I think about crestal approach first before I do anything. Okay, so this is what I have. Uh, this is strategy what I have. For the single maxillary posterior missing, the so last maxillary posterior missing, I always look at the lower first to see if we need teeth, tooth, then I'm going to go for the implant. But if there is only space for half tooth, then I'll think about not doing the implant placement. So you have to check the occlusion, right? And also you have to think about the distal buccal root angulation as well. Also, if you have like a distal buccal root is too distal, then you may need to place implant distally, then it create the medial medial cantilever as well. So that's not good for the mechanical view, point of view, right? So in those cases, I don't usually do the last molar replacing with the implant. Okay, so which instrument are you going to use for the sinus graft? Okay, it's uh, better to use the famous one, right? But still, there is no magic wand, right? You have to get used to it, and you have to understand mechanics of those instruments. It's better to have less invasive instrument, and also you have to think about use something easy to clean, right? Okay. Then, so advantage of using those kits, easy to set up the operation loom, and you can standardize the treatment, and easy to learn, and less chance to have problem during the implant placement or sinus graft. Okay. And my assistants are loving it, and I'm loving it too. Okay, but when you think about the science lateral approach, it's going to be very stressful, right? You may need to worry about what's going to use, and edema, and swelling, and bleeding, and perforation, and septa as well, right? And I like to use the SLA kit and S lemur, or the S, uh, LS lemur, right? So it always creates the thin cortical bone, and which is very safer during the treatment because you have thin bone plates on top of the membrane so that make you feel much better, right? So this works like this. And also have a stopper, right? right? So it's not going to go in too deep as well. So uh, this is the picture with the SL, uh, like LS limer, the window when you make, right? So we have different length of the uh, different uh, heights and different width of the drill, right? So you can choose, depends on the thickness of the uh, anterior lateral wall, and you can create the window safely without tearing the membrane, right? Okay, so where, then where you're gonna open the window, right? So in this case, we recommend to do like uh, medial as possible. Okay. Also, we have to think about most anterior and inferior. So if you make window too high, then you have to go down, go down, and it, you have more chance to perforate the membrane. That's why we recommend to make a window at most anterior and inferior area when you desire to do the sinus graft or implant placement. Okay, so the, this is another one, C lemur, which acts very similar with the trap fine drill, okay? If you love to take out the core, then you use the C lemur, and I like more the LS lemur because it leaves thin cortical plates that make safer during the suction or like when you dissect the membrane. Okay, so when you do the science graft, you have to do the membrane di dissection, right? We call it freer elevator, F-R-E-E-R, -E -E means you make membrane free, right? It acts different with the curette, right? Curette, you have to digging out, right? So you have to pull action to your body to remove the uh, granulation tissues or anything. But with the freer, you have to push. It's a big difference, right? So you cannot pull it down, you have to push it out. But when it touches, when you push out the end of the teeth, of this instrument has to touch the bone. Okay, so this is how it works. So freer elevator, you push 
tipped out, right? And the tip, end of the tip has to touch the ball itself. If not, you may have tear during the dissection using the free air elevator. In the SLA kit, there are three uh, free air elevators. So number one and number two and number three. So number with the number one, it's laser marked. So number one, you dissect mesial and distal buccal wall. Like this. And number two, there are two parts, rectangular and the wider part. Okay, so you, first time you use the rectangular part of number two free air elevator. So it means you go down, right? So you go down from the window when what you open, then go down to the crystal, right? So this is how it works. And uh, after you finish number two, uh, the rectangular part, then use the wider part to move far, okay? So this is very important, the uh, tip that you have. Right. So after that, when you meet the septa, and if you want to go to the media, then you change it to the number three. So it's double twisted, like a uh, twicely tw twisted uh, flare. So you do it like this. Then after that, you do the bone graft first before you place the implant. Then you can place the implant. And there are another uh, drill, a C guide drill, which will give you easily positioned the lemur, right? So it makes you target on the anterior lateral wall. Then you can use LS lemur or C lemur to remove the cortical ball to creating the window on the anterior lateral wall. Okay, so like this. Okay, so from now on, I'm gonna show you the clinical case, real case of one of my patients. Right, he need a dental implant on the left uh, posterior, and as you see here, there are not much bone for the implant placement. So definitely, we're gonna de do some bone graft, right? So lateral sinus bone graft. So I make it a little faster. I made it encode it a little faster. So this is the the movie clip while I'm doing the making incision. So I made a crystal, crystal incision here, and I made a one vertical incision on the, on the front top, right? The number 24. So I'm gonna move a little faster. So when I dissect, like this. As you see here, there are some bony spicule here, right? So I removed it. Now I'm using the LS lemur. And I don't do, uh, like, I don't go crazy. Like, I, I'm going little by little. So I do little by little. So once I uh, adapted it and uh, rotated it, then I check there are bleedings or openings. Okay? So still not opened, right? So I go a little more. As you see, you can see the drop, right? Drop of the uh, lemur. Now it's open, right? So you can see the thin cortical plate from the LS lemur, and it's moving with the curet, right? Now I have number one freer elevator to do the distal and the medial dissection. Okay, so I do the medial and the distal dissection first with number one freer elevator. So what's next? So ne uh, next will be number two, right? Still I'm using number one freer elevator. So now I have number two. You see this rectangular part, I go down from the window to the crystal part. Yeah, my hands covers, right? Okay, so once I finish with number two, and I'm using the other side to go further. 
right? So now I'm touching the crystal part of the maxilla with number finish number two. As you see, with the blip uh, uh, patient, you can see the movement of the membrane and the cortical plates from the LS lemur. So now I'm using number three, freer elevator, to go the far distal and the anterior part. So once I finish the uh, dissection, then I put the bone graft, and I'm using the uh, number two, freer elevator, as well, to push in the bone graft to the distal first. Okay, so once I finish the distal, then I move to the medial, anterior part, then I finish with the middle part. Okay, once you finish with the middle part, then it's not going to go into the anterior, medial part. So that's why I like to do distal first, fill the bone distally, and medially, then I go to the middle part. And this time I use the FDBA and the alloplastimo tier about the same amount. So this is how I fill the bone graft on the sinus area. So I do like I repeat this bone graft procedure and I use the LS lemur. Then I place implant like this. Then I cover the window with the PRF membrane. It's not has to be. And then I close the wound. Like this. So this is the immediately after the uh, sinus graft. And you see the window opening and the anterior lateral wall. And this is the CT cuts of the surgery. You see the uh, fill the bone around the implant. So I decide not to place the implant number 26. I'm going to place it later on. Okay, so this is uh, immediately after the sinus graft and implant placement on number 25, right? So then after six months, I place number 26. This is how it look. I waited for a while and I finished the restoration for this patient. Okay, so how do you like it? So it's, it doesn't look too difficult, right? So you have to follow the steps, like uh, using the LS lemur carefully, and uh, you don't you don't go like in one shot. You go little by little, checking. Then once you have an opening, then use freer elevator one for the medial and distal, number two for go down and go far, and number three for anterior and the medial one, right? Then you do the bone graft. Then you can place the implant. Like this. Okay, so we here we have another case. And actually this patient was referred from one of my colleagues. Okay, and this patient already have sinus graft for the le uh, light side upper, right? Then my colleague had found the perforation during the sinus graft. Then he stopped and uh, waiting for a few months. Then he referred this patient for sinus graft on the light side. Right, but well, as you see here, this patient has to go for the implant for the left upper as well. Okay, so this is the uh, the panorama uh, a CT scan. As you see here, is an opening, right, like this. So this sinus, like a light anterior lateral wall, has an opening previous the window from the previous surgery, right. So this is how uh, this is a clinical picture after I dissect, uh, dissected the periosteum, and you see the periosteum and maxillary sinus membrane are sticking together, okay, like this, and this is after a clinical picture after I uh, dissect the sinus membrane and do the bone graft, okay. So after that I covered with the PRF membrane for the anterior opening, anterior lateral opening. So let's see another movie. 
So the mechanic didn't put anything between the maxillary sinus opening and the maxillary sinus membrane. So it means periosteum and the sinus membrane are sticking together. So you have to dissect it, right? So if you want to separate the sinus membrane and the periosteal periosteum, then you're going to have big problem, right? So you're going to have some uh, like a uh, opening of sinus membrane, the tearing of sinus membrane. So you have to go above. So you have dissected the muscle, not the periosteum. So I'm going to show you how it works. Okay, so this is the incision part. Okay, so once I made the incision. Okay, so here you see the attachment, like you have like a scars, right? Then I'm using number 15 C blade to dissect the between muscle and the periosteum. So you go little by little, right? I'm going very slow. Once you dissect it a little, then, well, I have to use a uh, blade another time. Very carefully to separate, not between the periosteum and the sinus membrane, between the muscle and the periosteum. So one layer above, right? So you leave the periosteum and the anterior wall. So this is very careful procedure, right? You don't want to have sinus membrane tearing again, right? And uh, be uh, believe me, you have to have enough time to do this. Then, now I, I separate the sinus mem uh, periosteum and the muscle. Now you can see the previous window, previous opening from the previous sinus graft. Right? So I do the same. I use the freer elevator number one to three. Right? So here I have number one. A little bit above, then medial and distal. Right? Now I'm using number two to go down. Right? So from uh, number two, you can uh, go from a window from to the crestal part. So I do like uh, I, I'm not using pulling down. I do push out, and the, the tip of the instrument has to touch the ball, right? Then I'm using wider part of number two. like this and now I have number three right to go further and to go down more so once I finish with uh, these freer parts then I'm ready for the bone graft and I found there's no perforation of the membrane, right? Then I place the bone graft in the syringe. I carry it to the syringe and uh, I'm using the free elevator to pack the bone underneath of the membrane to the crystal area where we want to have a graft, right? So I do very carefully. I'm using free elevator to locate the bone graft. And as I told you before, I do distal first then I go mesial, then I put in the middle part. Okay, so this is what I do. Okay, so repeat, repeating the bone graft procedures like this. Then I cover with the PRF membrane, the anterior opening. And this case is, I didn't, I haven't created the window. The window is already there, window was already there. So I cover it with the PRF membrane because it a little bit uh, it was uh, too big, right? Then I place the PRF membrane. Then I cover uh, like I made a suture to close the wound. So this is how it worked. Okay, so this is revisit the maxillary sinus graft case, right?
So here is a, you can see the bone graft on the right side. And here is the CT scan after the sinus graft, after second sinus graft, right? Then this is how it looked afterwards and waited, waited. And we, I did the lateral approach for this left side as well. Okay, then we placed the implant like this. Okay, so with the SLA kit, you can do like most of sinus graft like this. You have to be familiar with using free oil elevator and LS lemurs. By the way, you're gonna be get used to, right? Then you can do the sinus graft without stress, right? Okay, so here is another case. This patient needs some bone graft and sinus graft for the left maxilla, left posterior maxilla, right? But here you see the headiness on the left posterior maxilla, right? On the left maxilla sinus. From the CT scan, you can see the membrane swelling, right? So you can have thickening, you can see the thickening of sinus membrane on the left side. So I told her to go to the ENT doctor and she had a medication for like a couple of months. Then she came back. As you see, there is no membrane thickening anymore, right? But still, the problem is there's here you, you can see the opening, right? It's the opening of crestal part, right? So this membrane thickening, I think this is from like odontogenic origin. Right? So here you can see the opening on the crestal area. This is clinical picture. As you see the lot, uh, lateness on the crestal area, maybe about like a number 27 area, right? So you can see the redness here. When I opened the flap, I intentionally made extended my incision to the palatal side. Okay? So I found the opening. And also I found the uh, perforation of the membrane. So now what are you going to do? So what I did was I made a window on the area of number 26, and then I dissected membrane. So including the tearing part, right? So I dissected membrane. I placed the cola tape through the crystal opening on number 27 area to cover the tearing part. Then I did the bone graft. I did the bone graft, not from the laterally, I did the bone graft like a crystal part. So I made the lateral windows. I did the bone graft not from the lateral window. I did I made a lateral window to dissect the tearing membrane, right? And I did the bone graft on the crystal area uh, uh, from the crystal opening. Okay, so here you can see the bone fill, right? And I covered the crystal opening with the PRF membrane and I close the suture like this and this is the periapical radiographs of this patient after the bone graft. I did the lateral approach here and I did the crystal approach here, right? So here were the opening was. So I waited and a few months and this is how it look after a few months. Then uh, this is the time of Lee entry, right? As you see, there are, there was no lateness anymore. Then this is how it look after wound opening for implant placement. And I placed two implant like this at the site that I did the graft. Then I did the implant placement, and this is how it look in the periapical radiograph, like this. And this is cut of CT scan. Also, CTs from the CT scan, you can see the bone graft around the implant, right? And uh, again, this is the periapical pictures from implant placement, uncovery, impression making, and final restoration. Okay, so this is a clinical picture of uh, healing abutment after second surgery. Here you see there is no not much space, right? This, so I decided to do number uh, 37 crown again to replace number 37 to create the space. So this is final restoration on the cast and the final restoration panoramic radiograph after final restoration, like this. Well, so if you have a perforation, you have to you know, uh, consider it exposed and dissect it. 
not from the crystal, because you have crystal opening already, right? So in those cases, you can use lateral approach to help to dissect the membrane and the crystal tearing of crystal area. Well, this is my last case today, right? So time goes very fast. Hey, it's already been more than 30 minutes. Okay, so here, this patient need to extract number 25 and number 27, three unit fixed partial denture because patient had fracture on number 25 and also you can see the periapical lesion on number 27. And you see here, num uh, this part is very thin cortical bone left as a pneumatized, right? Well, I removed the uh, tooth, number 25 and number 27, right? Now I need to place implant. But as you see here, the, here is a septa right here. And you see there are different looms, right? So this septum divided two different parts. So this part have a little of a bone, but this part have less of bone on the crystal area, from the crystal area. So what I decide to do is I'm going to do the crystal approach for uh, this front implant and I'm going to do the lateral approach for this posterior implant. Okay, so if this is a radiograph to see you, I'm new, what I'm using the SCA and do the bone graft from the crystal. Yeah, because of the septa, right, so it's very, very well containing defect. So you can do the easily do the bone graft through the crystal for this area. But posterior, there are not much of bone, so I decide to go for the lateral approach to fill the bone until the septa, right? So this is a clinical picture like this. Uh, this is number 25 implant site that I did a sinus graft for the crystal, from the crystal approach. And here you can see the, my window by the LS lemur for posterior implant, for the lateral approach, okay? So here, I dissected membrane like the same fashion that I show you on the movie clip. And I did a bone graft, right? Like this, and I placed implant. Then I covered the, cover it with the sutures. Oh, I haven't placed implant for number 27. I'm gonna place it later. but. This way, you can use a crystal and the lawyer mix and match together. They easily make a sinus bone graft in different situation, right? So this is a CT scan of uh, before and after. This is before and this is after. Words. Okay, so this is a, a panoramic radiograph after a few months. So, well, I don't know. Is it helpful for yourself to do the science lateral approach? And I'm using SCA and SLA uh, more than 10 years now. I, I feel very satisfied. I'm very satisfied with this instrument. And I don't, I don't using any other instrument for sinus graft. Still, these days, even there are, they, they have a kit called the old kit, sinus old kit, which include the SCA and SLA all together. So, uh, when I have a sinus surgery, I always tell my assistant I'm going to need SCA or SCA or sinus all kit, right? So those three kits, you don't have to have those three. Either you can have the SCA and SLA or sinus all kit, right? But those kit saves my time a lot. And also it's good for my assistant after clean, after surgery, they don't have to much, uh, they don't have to spend too much time to cleaning those instruments and uh, we set up the instruments. Okay. Uh, but still, I also know that they, these are not magic wand. Okay. You need to understand the mechanics and you have to get used to with this instrument. Right. So I believe these tools works for you and if you understand what it is. Okay, so try to use the SCLA, SLA and SCA for the sinus uh, graft, what you have for next visit. Okay, so thank you very much for joining us and thank you very much to being with me for today. Okay, so that was my last slide. Thank you.